Hi Divas. I thought I'd give you a rundown on yesterday's craft table at a local craft show. Now this, well, it's largely a flea market craft show. There were a lot of craft people there, more than <clears throat> um, you see at flea markets. But it was like um, a whole community-wise. It's like a Victorian community. And uh, if you are in one of the main tables, why is this stuck together? If you're at one of the main uh, sections of the town, <laughs> I heard that the tables can run up to $400 a table. Well, obviously, that wasn't me. That wasn't my experience. So what I did was uh, they had a, there's a local church that a friend of mine belongs to, and <coughs> their tables were $15 a piece. That's kind of like more my speed. So that's what, um, that's what I did. And out of some of the extra uh, spare drills that I have, I made some snowflakes. This is a, a dollar store piece of wood that I painted, sanded, and glued with Aileen's Jewelit, glued uh, rhinestones to. So I made three large silver ones. They're all a little bit different. Um, and I made two of the smaller snowflakes. I have two large and one small of the white ones. I didn't have enough white centers so I did some silver centers in the middle. This is a, a ring of hearts which I thought was kind of pretty. And I have two white and gold. A lot of my things are, are white and gold. So if these don't sell then you know whatever. I'll put them on my own Christmas tree. In this case they didn't sell but they were up on the table. I'll try to insert somewhere along here a little uh, picture of my flea market table this time and a picture of these things up close. I hope they do well. Maybe at the next one we shall see. I want to give you a rundown on how it compared to the first, the first flea market. So at the first flea market table I sold three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of the three dollar kits. They were two for five, so and one, three, four keychains. I traded a keychain for a cupcake <laughs> in addition to that, and one large painting and one tote. So the total after the $20 table was $51 profit. Eh, was it worth sitting all day for $51? I don't know. So, at skip back days, the table was $15. I sold two, four, six sticker kits. I sold six tote bags, which was really good. I had a bunch of old 31 totes, um, the brand 31. And I sold several, uh, like a, a set of three for $20. And a keychain or two. So I gained $71 minus the $15 table. So it was 56 So I did $5 more than the last table. They asked for peace signs this time. <laughs> And something interesting, a gal next to me had a frame with a PayPal QRC code and a Venmo QRC code so that people could pay via their credit card or whatever um, via those areas by just scanning the QRC code and then uh, paying for it. So instead of having to go through all the, the credit card stuff that a small business, tiny teeny teensy weensy business like this <laughs> would would do. That's the best way I think. I'm going to try that for the next time. Uh, she also gave me a, a heads up that she uses she, she dips her resin stuff in Crystal Lac from Minwax. Bright Tone Crystal Lac. 
I'm going to get into that and see if that would work for me. So that's that's on the line. <clears throat> what I thought I'd do today while we chat is go through my extra diamonds, my extra packs of goodies that I need to sort and put in containers. I have more of those um, little a set of these <laughs> that I can put them in yet. And I have a few empty ones in with the colors. So what I'm going to do is sort out these colors. I'm going to bring it way out here. I'm going to sort them into color families. And then one at a time I'm going to sort the color families down into putting them into the uh, into the individual things. Now, this might take all day, but I won't subject you to all that. <laughs> what I will do is um, show you an after picture. Because <laughs> I would like to get these all in, like, after. In after mode, okay? Alright, I have a lot of these, so I will just open them up. Start moving them out. And the extra drills that fall out of these things, I have my handy dandy little vacuum cleaner ready to go. <laughs> there are already a few that are straggling here. So red, orange, yellow at the top. I've got white here. Green, blue, purple. Put black over here. <laughs> These are neat. These are, are black little rectangles that I got in a kit. Uh, in a um, keychain kit. I thought that was neat. I never saw this before. These bags come in handy all the time. I don't have to buy any more. Uh, I don't have to buy any more Ziplocs at that rate. Yellow, red. Now I'm not sorting by anything other than color at the moment. Okay, there's a brown. I guess that goes between the black and the gold. Greens, blue, yellow. It's like a champagne. It kind of goes between here. Or should I put it with the yellows? I'm not sure. Definitely blue. Hmm. Well, I'll put it with the yellows for now. So, okay, these are regular drills that don't have a DMC number. I'm going to hold off on those. Um, I met some nice people at the flea market. Some people I knew, or I should say craft show, not flea market. There were people there that had wreaths that they made, uh, seasonal wreaths and stuff. Then they had, uh, um, some people with clothing. Some people with pottery, a lot with jewelry. I don't feel that people are buying much. You know, just they don't have as much dispensable income right now. Disposable income. So I don't think that they're buying much, actually, of the extra stuff. You know? I think that's why my sales aren't going as well as they might have years ago, but... I think I'm getting better at doing it, at making things, but, uh, but I'm not selling as much, so 
Who knows? Uh, there will be a crinkle alert on here because I'm crinkling the papers. Plastic. But you guys can handle it. I think... I always like to talk to the person next to me in this... This is an AB. Uh, I'll have to put the special AB somewhere as well. Well, for now, you can be in here. Oh, silver. I have gold. I don't have silver. Put them up with the whites, I guess. Clear. Clear with black. Yeah, I guess I go with the clear. Okay. most interesting people. Yesterday I bartered two of the three dollar sticky kits for um, two resin keychains. So that worked out well. Oh, these are no DMC numbers too. No, they're no DMC numbers too. That's for later. What I did on the tote bags is I kept the the list. I'm going to put that in my notebook and I put a sample if I had any extra I put a sample of the um, the drill here. Now I see some some labeling numbers on them. A DMC like number. I'm going to use those to stick on the bottom of the packages that match that that drill because if I if I can see a pattern maybe I can see a pattern with the the numbering of them that'll make it easier like to make a chart that's the idea we shall see if that works or not I have been having trouble getting any crystal company to share their chart with me and it's been frustrating because I wanna I wanna like label it better I'll put pink in with the red for now I want to label it better. I want to have a system. I want to come up with a system that works that maybe I can share with you. Because I, from Diamond Painting with Donnie, um, I have got some charts. She, you know, has them on her, her site that you can you can download uh, a chart for diamond dots and how it compares to DMC numbers because diamond dots has a different numbering system. And then DMC <clears throat> and there's like comparison I'll put the gold never mind there is a comparison between the two of them there was another one that I found I don't remember what I have it somewhere else but I don't remember exactly what uh, the company was that's different that um, that needed a separate chart, but the crystal drills do. They definitely go by a different system, and I'm telling you, oops, it's frustrating. This would be brown. I'd be brown, not gold. I'm constantly moving them around. Yellow. Yellow. I right, cut these apart. Where's my scissors? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to do that too. Brown champagne. Yellow. Brown. Peach. Well, you'll go in with the pink for now. Yellow. I can't tell what that is. There's only one left. And since it has a code with it, I want to keep. It's a red. Maybe I can find where the code belongs. It's green. 
brown, brown. Oops, I have a whole strip here to take apart. Okay, we'll do. She, um, the gal next to me made resin. Uh, she had those thermal cups. They're like the Arctic cups. It was a decent company. It, you know, she didn't pay like a hundred dollars for the Arctic cups, and she um, she had a very reasonably priced supplier apparently, and she would put glitter on them. She would do decals and glitter. She would do custom uh, custom made ones as well with names on them and everything. And she saw the my my drills next to me and. and she was interested in, excuse me, what glue that I stick that I stick them on with, and that's where she told me about the the shellac, the crystal lac, and they were gorgeous, gorgeous cups. After she gets them all done, she dips them in resin, and she has them on a rotisserie so that the resin is evenly coated all the way around and stays evenly coated as it's drying. I thought that was so ingenious. It was clever. Clever, clever. Not not something I'm willing to put <laughs> a whole lot of energy into. So it would, would have been worth it for $30 to, to buy a, a cup from her. And maybe one day I will, but right now I just don't have you know, I need my money for car payments and such. And that's the way it is. She was so sweet to talk to. And we got to laughing during the day and sharing trade secrets. She clued me into another local sale that's happening in two weeks. I think I'm going to try to do that one. I mean, I have so much stock. I mean, I might as well sit there on a Saturday and, and do it. Why not, right? That's smoke. That's a smoky gray. I guess I'll put that with black. Yellow skulls. Those yellow skulls. Yellow and red. Dark, dark red. <clears throat> so that's the deal with that. Um... She was a young mom. Well, she had, she has kids in the school system I substitute for. So she has one in a, in a middle school and I may run into that young person in my um, teaching, which would be fun. I don't know if I quite remember the last name she gave me for them. <clears throat> but anyway. Oh, there are a lot of loose ones in here. Gotta find the loose one and corral it. It's a dark blue. Uh, is it the. Uh, it might be this dark blue. Well, I don't know. I'll hold that back for a minute. That's the one. That's the dark blue it fell out of. For some reason, I didn't feel the need to seal that bag. Silly me. Silly, silly me. <laughs> the weather's starting to feel like fall. My allergies are going bananas because of the tree mold and the leaves pop out and when the leaves fall off <clears throat> that's when I have trouble with my allergies so that's why I'm coughing and I apologize for it I hope I don't I hope it doesn't draw your attention too much uh, let's see what else uh, Yep, there you are, the exact same. So, why don't I take a moment and put them together in the baggie. Let's trash them. Let's 
that's the baggie. Zell is the blue. My husband and I were talking about Pennsylvania Dutch foods yesterday. He saw a, a, a <clears throat> shelf at, at a local grocery store that had them. <laughs> they had them with the ethnic stuff. Now, I grew up Pennsylvania Dutch, so, you know, to me it's not an ethnic food, it's everyday food. And to see it in the ethnic area was kind of funny. My husband's not Pennsylvania Dutch, but he's German, mostly. Lithuanian German. And other than the Pennsylvania Dutch, I also have regular Dutch, German, <laughs> in my system, pretty purely. Um, so that's cool. Cool for me. Oh, that's another list I want to put somewhere. So we were talking about chow chow, which is like a pickled um, pickled beans, like yellow beans, green beans, the wax beans. They're string beans, but they're like called wax beans. <clears throat> they have sauerkraut there and horseradish. And, of course, you couldn't put on the shelf uh, Lebanon bologna and... Oops, why did I put a green over here? Ooh. Okay. <coughs> Keep them separate. Peoples. What else did he say was on there? <coughs> Some of the, the stuff that I know, it's fresh things. So it's not like they're going to be able to put it on a shelf. Like pickled cabbage. Well, that's not fresh. That's pickled. But I'm thinking of um, the creamy cucumber salad and the Lebanon bologna, bouvish ankle, which is like a big giant pierogi. What else should we chat about? gets packed. <laughs> it does get packed. More of those blues. I'm escaping. Escaped all over my desk here. Yikes. Where are those blues? I think these are the, yep, 007 blues. What do you know? There's a new James Bond movie coming out soon. Somebody said it's the last one. I can't imagine that it's the last one latest one or it's maybe it's the last Daniel Craig as Bond I love Bond movies yeah they are pretty sexist I know but still I like the plot the adventure my dad used to watch them all the time so it's like being sitting with my dad watching TV, you know. He used to like that kind of thing all the time. Spy novels. The other thing we used to both like to read is the Clive Cussler um, novels. They're, they start with a, a reality that, that, you know, a situation that's real to us. And then it ends up in some far-flung wild wild place like the one I'm thinking of is finding Columbus's tomb or Magellan's tomb whichever one it was um, in this cave system that they stumbled across I, I don't know it just gets so far flung it starts out with a, a routine submarine mission or something like that and it ends up with these crazy discoveries 
and it's exciting and there's bad guys and villains that they you know they uh avoid and it's just funny it's fun it's, ex it's suspenseful it keeps you it keeps you thinking um keeps your mind going that you don't want to put it down <clears throat> at least that's my experience with them uh, what am I reading right now I don't remember the name of it but right now I'm reading for a class I'm taking a a class in putting my resume together and it's on bivocational ministry. A lot of churches are down to part-time. You can only afford part-time staff. And for those of us who liked full-time ministry or, you know, who did full-time ministry, there's less and less chances of us finding something like that again. tea time. So I was looking into bivocational ministry ideas. Uh, he likes the my idea of oops the golds are down here, sorry. Of doing this, you know, doing the channel. I want to do some online church work. Uh, maybe I don't know. He said most of that is you gotta figure it out yourself because it's so new right now. There are very few people involved in it. So I might have to, but I have to get the the uh, permission from my what they call adjudicatory, which means it's the oversight committee in my uh, in my denomination. I have to get the go ahead and the clearance from them, which means I have to put a plan together. And from that plan, I have to, you know, I have it all laid out as to how I'm going to uh, do worship online or the other parts of ministry online, how each might work. Does it meet up with the two characteristics, the two sacraments, which is baptism, how we're going to do baptism and communion? Well, communion online is being done now because of COVID. We had to figure out a way to do that. And that is being done now, so that's not a big deal. Uh, baptism would have to be in person, and it would have to be like then broadcast, I guess, to others who are uh, involved. Um, there might be another way, but I just I'll have to think things over. How would I do worship? Well, I would start with the Bible study. I would start with the discussion group that meets weekly, I think. And one that's kind of open-ended, one that's not not seeking to find overwhelming answers, like, not overwhelming, what am I thinking of? Not seeking to find ultimate answers to life, the universe, and everything, uh, but more like discussion, just hearing people's thoughts, airing out our thoughts, uh, looking together at at different things at things that are uh, contradicting and where do we stand in life today with regards to what is said in the passage and how we wrestle with those everyday decisions <clears throat> that affect us how does our faith intersect with our with our life I'm interested, I'm always interested in that. How faith intersects with life. And there are no easy answers to that. So that's kind of where I would start. 
I have a friend and I have a a YouTube channel that we're just starting to put together. Uh, we had a little business called Drawing Nearer, which is uh, we would go around and do retreats, and we have a book that we created together. <coughs> so. We used to do, you know, day retreats and weekend retreats according to things in the book. And she was the artsy person and I was the the faithy person, although I'm part artsy and she's got a deep faith too. So we overlapped, but that's what kind of made it work. Uh, it was just, it's still a beautiful friendship. And it would be neat to <clears throat> maybe start churchy things on that site as we already have it up and going. Uh, it's still a lot of work to be done in that department though. Oh, more three tens. <coughs> I'll put the extra three tens down here by the black anyway. Because sometimes I use them in, in these things. Is that gold or green? That's a green. Ooh, it's a green that's almost black. Oh dear. Okay, all right. Don't fall out all at once. And bye bye off the side. Gee whiz. Gold. Purple. Blue. Black and silver. Is it black or is it silver? It's silver. Okay. Pink, green, you're kind of a teal, olive. Now in sorting the, the greens, sort, sorting these colors is not easy because you have different shades. Some are more red, some are more blue. So it's kind of difficult sometimes to pick them apart and sort them. But I do the best I can all I can do, right? Pinky red. Black. Silver. <laughs> I keep hearing the words of Yukon Cornelius in the background, you know, from uh, uh, from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Silver. Ooh, that's pretty. That's purple. It has a DMC. I don't know why that's there then. I'm going to move that to the other room. Ugh. Okay. Silver. Purple. Ooh, black. Yeah, these are all, these drills are all left over from special, special design kits. I already have a big collection of them. Now, this is why I want to do something with these. I don't want to just throw them out. I want to make like ornaments and things out of them so that they're of use to somebody. And that's the hard part because I wish, and I'm, I'm going to, as long as I'm in this, I'm going to keep wishing that somebody figures out a way to use recycled materials to create these to make them able to be recyclable because we're all concerned with the environment and I'm telling you there's nothing left in that these are champagne colored I mean it, this craft is very very um, well it, it uses a lot of material and by doing that we generate more waste some people throw their drills out their extra drills 
and I get it. I understand. Oh, wait, no, these don't go in there. These are the wrong number. That's why I brought them out here. All right, that's the way I did that. Let's not go through all that again. Um, so, yeah. It's just, we need to be conscious of what we use. Conscious of the trash, the waste that we're creating. Some of you may not believe in, you know, <clears throat> uh, greenhouse effect and everything, but our kids definitely are taught that. So they are concerned about it. And if they are concerned about something, we ought to be concerned about something. Seriously. Oh, I'm dropping all these little tiny baggies. Uh, I had this much when I first started collecting these. This is just crazy. If I would do it the same every time, I would put them away. As soon as I'm done with them, I wouldn't have this mess. What else should we talk about? Oh, I put regular AB, AB drills, like, you know, like the yellow ABs in with the yellows because when I'm looking for them, that's where I would look for them right now. I do have a whole set of square sparklers of that whatever's available. But I don't have rounds yet, and until I do, the rounds, since most of these special drills are round, I am going to keep them with their color. Ooh, that's an interesting color, isn't it? Isn't it? There's my whites. I did whites, a lot of whites and silvers when I, I pulled them out when I did the uh, snowflakes. So I don't have too many of those in here. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you're working on your own. Working on your own project. I don't want to take your time away from, your precious time away from your own work. But I hope I'm keeping you company because you're keeping me company, and I thank you.